In today's last-minute cheat sheet session, let's compare two fully managed NoSQL database solutions from Google Cloud, Cloud Bigtable and Cloud Firestore. This is the first part of the last-minute cheat sheet of a NoSQL database, Cloud Bigtable. Bigtable is a fully managed petabyte scalable NoSQL database service for large analytic and operational workloads. Cloud Bigtable is ideal for storing very large amounts of single keyed data. It supports high read and write throughput at a very low latency. And it is an ideal data source for MapReduce operations, such as edge base replacement. This video will focus on last-minute cheat sheet, so I won't spend time to explain Bigtable's architecture, such as instances, class, clusters, nodes, and storage model. If you are new to Bigtable, please pause this video and review the big data architecture first. Now let's take a look at the Bigtable's schema design. The general concepts for designing the schema are each table has only one index called the row key. All operations are atomic at the row level. Ideally, both reads and writes should be distributed evenly. It's better to have a few large tables than many small tables, etc. There are three types of row keys, reversed domain names, string identifiers, and timestamps. You can use one or using one as part of the row key, but keep in mind row key is the only index to retrieve or update rows in the big table. Using a write row key will impact the read and write performance for example, pick up random keys such as UUID will perform best for writes but poor for scan and sequential read operations. So the best practices of choosing the row key will be include multiple identifiers in your row key. For example, all the number, hash all the time as the row key, or using row key prefixes for multi-tenancy. For example, use your unique ID for each company as a row key prefix to store and track purchase histories on behalf of many companies. You should avoid non-reverse domain names, sequential numerical IDs, frequent, frequently updated identifiers, and hash values as the row key. As a general rule of thumb, keep your root keys reasonably short. Long root keys take up additional memory and storage, and it will increase the time to get a response. When you are in the exam, any questions on selecting the solution for storing time series data? The answer is big table. The time series data schema design pattern is choosing between a tall and narrow table or a short and wide table. For time series, you should generally use tall and narrow tables, which are one event per row. As an optimization, you can use short and wide tables, but avoid unbounded numbers of events. For example, if you really need to retrieve an entire month of the events at once. Another issue you need to avoid is big table hotspotting from any type of row key that contains a monotonically increasing volume. There are two types to avoid hotspotting in time series data field promotion, and sorting. By default, prefer field promotion. Field promotion avoids hotspotting in almost all cases, and it tends to make it easier to design a row key 
that facilitated quarries. In brief, one arrow key for a time series includes a timestamp. All of your writes will target a single node, fill that node, and then move on to the next node in the cluster, that resulting in the hard spotting. So reverse timestamps only one necessary. Review this page for more details of the sample row key design patterns for time series data. I will continue the remaining sections of Cloud Big Table in the next video. Thanks for watching and as always subscribe to my channel for more great cloud computing learning tips. Thank you.